Welcome to Get Webhooked, how to build your Cisco DNA Center integration. I am Gabriel Zapodanu, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. In my current role as a Technical Marketing Engineer, I am focused on Cisco DNA Center platform, APIs, and integrations. My work includes developing programmability content, use cases, working on software development kits, publishing code on GitHub, YouTube videos on the YouTube channel. This session is focused on network troubleshooting. During the 2019 Global Networking Trends Survey, we asked our customers and partners what is the most time-consuming task. Identifying and troubleshooting network issues is by large the most time-consuming uh, task that IT organizations have to complete today. During this talk, I will show you how to automate the incident detection and logging, how to initiate a network issue assessment using APIs, I will send notifications to network operators and show you how to send notifications to end users. I will show you how to lower the cost of incident management and decrease the time between the network issue and the operator response. Core to the functionality of the use case today is the Cisco DNA Center platform. The Cisco DNA Center platform enables consumption of DNA center resources in using APIs and enables us to build integrations. For the use case today, we are going to use the northbound REST APIs that are grouped based on functionality. We are going to consume also notifications from Cisco DNA Center being sent using webhooks. Cisco DNA Center platform also enables using the southbound device pack SDK onboarding devices that are not natively supported by Cisco DNA Center. Toward the end of this presentation, I will give you a list of resources that are available to get you started using Cisco DNA Center APIs and build your own integration. The API lifecycle management for Cisco DNA Center is here as a reference for you. Some APIs are going to be published on Cisco DNA Center as beta. These APIs may change when they will go in production, when they will become supported. Once an API is supported, we will uh, basically maintain that API and not make any changes. First, we need to release new APIs with updated functionality. We will deprecate and inform you of the APIs that will be retired. As a summary for a REST API request to response exchange using Cisco DNA Center, here is an exchange for how to get a client information specifying the MAC address at a specific timestamp. The request will be sent from the client application. Cisco DNA Center will send the response and the status code. This response includes information regarding the IP address, the MAC address, the type of client, and the access information to which switch, in this case, VLAN and the interface the device is connected to. The response will be assigned to the client underscore response, parsed, and used in our workflow automation. A second option we have to consume Cisco DNA Center information is using the event notification framework. As Cisco DNA Center collects information from the network infrastructure, it will group this information, these events, based on the type of event. It could be that we have assurance events, could be automation, maybe a workflow like plug and play that has not completed properly, or could be issues related to the Cisco DNA Center system itself. These events are going to be published to an event catalog where we can do configuration of the severity and priority of the events, and also we can subscribe to these events. We have few different options that we, have, that we can use to subscribe to events. One is webhooks, the one that we will use today, email, or the integration to ServiceNow that is an out-of-the-box integration from Cisco DNA Center to an ITSM platform. The value of using these notifications are, obviously, we can build a mobile app, network operation center dashboards, or integrations to ITSM, like the one that I'm going to demonstrate, the integration to Jira Service Desk Cloud. To configure Cisco DNA Center webhooks is pretty simple. We need to provide only few values that are required. 
We need to name the subscription. The subscription type for a webhook will be REST. We need to define the URL where we are going to send this notification, the method, post or put, and an authentication method. The request and response exchange for the webhooks, Cisco DNS Center will send a notification using post or put. You can see on the left hand side the content of what it will be included with a notification. A webhook receiver will receive this notification, send a response code, collect more information regarding this issue from Cisco DNS Center, and execute the next steps. So where do we need to use REST APIs and where do we need to use webhooks? REST APIs are always used by client applications. There will be a method that will be used and REST APIs provide you different methods, few more that uh, webhooks support. It is always the client application that makes the connection and they follow a pool model. Webhooks are always used by servers to publish data to pre-configure destinations. So this step is very important. You need to pre-configure the destination where you want to send the notification. The methods are post or put and they follow a push model. They will send data only when there is an event. There are a few different integration architecture options that we have when we are building an integration from Cisco DNS Center to a third party platform. The first one is Cisco DNA Center on the left could send notification to a third party platform using webhooks. This platform may or may not have a DNA Center app running on the platform that could use REST APIs to collect additional information from DNA Center. Another option is we can send a notification to a middleware app and use REST APIs with DNA Center to collect additional information regarding the issue, the client or network devices. This middleware app can talk with the vendor to the third party platform with the APIs that are supported. This solution may be required when maybe Cisco DNA Center is not able to communicate with cloud hosted platforms, or maybe there are incompatibility between the APIs supported by Cisco DNA Center and the third party platform. Another option is where we are going to develop an adapter, a software adapter on Cisco DNS Center to send notification to a third party platform. This will be, for example, the approach for the integration from Cisco DNS Center to IPAM or to the integration to PagerDuty that is coming. There's another option where we need a software adapter and the DNS Center app running on the third party platform. This is the integration from Cisco DNA Center to ITSM to ServiceNow. During the talk today, I will cover a use case of how to build an app, a middleware app, to communicate between Cisco DNA Center to third party platforms like Jira Service Desk, WebEx Teams, and PagerDuty. Here are some middleware app integrations options. It will enable the data transform between Cisco DNA Center and other platforms. For example, if I want to communicate between Cisco DNA Center to send a notification to WebEx Teams, I need the name of the team that I want to send the message to and the bot, the WebEx bot that I want to use. This information is not available in Cisco DNA Center. Building a middleware app, we can create this integration between Cisco DNA Center and WebEx Teams. Sometimes, as I said, maybe there is a need for a proxy between Cisco DNA Center in a cloud hosted platform. And uh, this uh, middleware app is a solution for this requirement. Here is the use case that uh, I will demonstrate in a few minutes. I will automate the process to detect issues and create new incidents. This incident in this case is created on Jira Service Desk Cloud and is created, updated and closed using APIs. I will update the new incident with the impacted device information. This information is collected from Cisco DNS Center using the REST APIs. I'm collecting information like the device management IP address, physical location, software version, serial number, and device health. Next, I will identify if any configuration changes of the device. We will identify if the configuration has changed, the running configuration of the device is changed comparing with the last known 
configuration of the device as it is stored by Cisco DNA Center. Next, I will identify and execute all the Cisco DNA Center suggested actions and post them in the incident that has been created. This is important as the execution of the suggested actions will be completed at the time the incident is created and not later, maybe a few hours, when the network operator will troubleshoot this issue. I will log all the received notifications for reporting and dashboards, and this consumption could be using APIs to consume the data that is stored. This is also important because I can build dashboards, maybe for training and identifying critical issues, critical locations where we have a high number of incidents in our infrastructure. I can send multiple notifications to WebEx Teams and PagerDuty, and I can close the incident when resolved by Cisco DNA Center. The solution includes APIs from a few different platforms. First, I will build a simple webhook receiver running on Flask. This is in a virtual machine. The Flask infrastructure runs on a virtual machine in my lab. The same infrastructure could be cloud-based, depends on the application that you need to develop. I will use the Cisco DNA Center APIs, the device details, command runner, template programmer, all of these APIs will be called from the webhook receiver. I will use the Jira Service Desk APIs to create, update, and close tickets. I will send notifications using REST APIs to WebEx teams, and I will use the events API from PagerDuty for notifications. The application workflow. First, Cisco DNSM will send a webhook notification to a webhook receiver. This receiver will collect additional information regarding the issue and the network device is impacted using REST APIs. We will use command runner APIs to execute also the suggested actions that are part of the Cisco DNS Center Assurance issue. It will create a new incident in Jira Service Desk with information regarding the incident number and the DNS Center issue details. We will send a notification to WebEx teams and one to pager duty. The same webhook receiver is able to receive notification from software defined WAN, Meraki, or any other platforms that will be able to send notifications, webhook notifications. Let's do a demo. Here is the Cisco DNS Center homepage. We see that during the last 24 hours, we have zero critical issues. To access the Cisco DNS Center platform and the events catalog, we go to Developer Toolkit and Events. I will show you the subscription to an interface connecting network devices is down. We have four active subscriptions. One that will be used today during the demo is the Webhook CentOS subscription. The information can be reviewed here, the URL, and the method is post, and the authentication is HTTP basic off. This is the dashboard of the webhook receiver, the desktop. We can see the Flask receiver is running. To create an incident, I'm going to disable a WAN interface between two natural devices, between two cloud services routers. What you will see next is that as soon as Cisco DNA Center learns in a few seconds about this interface being down, it will send notifications using webhooks to this webhook receiver. The webhook receiver will collect the information from Cisco DNA Center, parse it, and start to execute the workflow automation. It will create a new incident in Jira Service Desk. This incident has the number 1537, will collect additional information about the device and send notifications to WebEx teams. From here, we can navigate to the Cisco DNA Center issue details or the Jira Service Desk incident. The Cisco DNA Center assurance issue details provides us additional information regarding the device that is impacted and the suggested actions. These are the commands that we will execute and collect in the Jira Service Desk incident. 
we can see that this incident continues to be updated as the workflow continues. And we have information regarding the DNA center issue details, information regarding the device. Also, if we have any configuration changes and we identify that we have an interface that has been shut down, the one that I disabled earlier, and the suggested action output, the execution on both ends of the devices. Of course, we cannot connect to the device SP as it is disconnected from the network infrastructure. We can see that we completed the GDU issue updates. At this time, the web receiver is ready to receive a new notification from Cisco DNA Center. We will refresh the homepage of Cisco DNA Center and we will see that now we had a critical incident, the one that I just created by disabling an interface. We will browse to PagerDuty and we will see that we have a notification as well from PagerDuty. And this notification is for the ticket 1537 that has been uh, basically correlated with another incident that has been received from a different web receiver running in the cloud. How do we get started? How do you uh, get started to build your own integrations? Cisco DNA Center on uh, DevNet has a code exchange and automation exchange that will enable you to find sample code like this uh, and get you started. Also, DevNet has a number of different sandboxes, labs, and you can find the API documentation for Cisco DNA Center. We have also the Cisco Enterprise Network in Programmability GitHub organization, where you can find sample code and the information of how to install and use the Cisco DNA Center Northbound Python SDK. We have also a YouTube channel dedicated to Cisco DNA Center APIs and integrations. The Cisco DNA Center homepage on Cisco DevNet has a number of developer guides that will help you get started with the workflow of how to build simple scripts to take advantage of the capabilities of Cisco DNA Center APIs and perhaps help you get started with building your next integration. Also on Cisco DNA Center homepage on DevNet, you are going to find the API documentation. The Cisco DNA Center API docs can be accessed through the Cisco DNA Center platform, or you can find it here. If you do not have access always uh, to a Cisco DNA Center, you can find out the API documentation on DevNet. Also, another advantage of using this is that you can access API documentations for different software versions of Cisco DNA Center. You can also configure to run these commands against your own Cisco DNA Center, this API calls, and get the output here. The sample code for the use case that I demo today can be found in this repo. Please remember this code is for proof of concept. It is an open source project, and it is designed to help you get started. It is not a production ready code. Thanks so much for your time today. Should you have any questions, please reach out to me and I hope you continue to enjoy DevNet Create 2020.